We finished up Man at Arms. Now it's time to see what we can do with Skeletor. Man at Arms turned out pretty awesome. So I'm hoping that Skeletor turns out the same way. One of the exciting things I just read is Kevin Smith is redoing He-Man and the Masters of the Universe for Netflix. And he's confirmed that the style of the characters is going to look the same. So they're still going to look like those muscle-bound, overgrown guys that we're used to. But hopefully, they'll kind of look like what I'm doing here to these toys. Making them just a little more realistic and a little more awesome. So, here, just playing with Skeletor like any, all, all of us did. Isn't that awesome? I never had him as a kid. My brother did. Um, but he always kept him super clean and never played with him much. So the first thing to do is naturally rip them apart. They come apart pretty easy. Uh, actually easier than I thought when I was doing the man at arms. Uh, I accidentally pulled them apart right there at the waist without even knowing I did it. So here I just found a dark blue. Went ahead and did the standard paint all over and then wipe it off. Give it some more highlights or more particular some low lights. Really added a lot and that blue color was really awesome it turned out well it was just a standard apple barrel uh, color i happened to have in the drawer so like usual paint it on wipe it off Now that I got all the low lights in there, you can really see the definition better. It makes a big difference in the way the toy looks. So here I'm just adding some more of that low lights, highlights to the fur banana hammock thing that they wear. It's always kind of weird that whatever. Anyway, again here, trying to add some, some dark shadows to the face, add some more uh, low lights to the armor, etc. By now you get the point. But one of the things that always bugged me is the cartoon had a lot more colors than the toys. But I understand, you know, if you're manufacturing things, you got to keep the number of paint jobs, the number of colors you use to a minimum. Here, I'm trying to make it look more like the, the cartoon, more like what I remembered it to be like. Plus, it's fun. Let's be honest, it's fun. I'm a grown man in my garage and I'm painting toys for fun. It's relaxing. The rest of the world kind of sucks lately, so let's paint Skeletor. Now it's time to add some silver to the sword, or half the sword. Did you know, and of course you did, because by now if you're watching this, you've already watched the Netflix series, that originally it was the Sword of Power which had two halves, and Skeletor had a half, and He-Man had a half, and if you put them together, it made like a super power sword or something. I don't know, it was like Legos for Masters of the Universe or something. But that's why you only get half one, or so we say, or probably more specifically, it was cheaper to manufacture a single side mold. So now I'm gonna try and put the armor back on. Do you remember how long these things took? Even as a kid, it was terrible. So it's 2020, they've brought back the originals, but it's still ridiculously hard to put the armor on. So this looked way too long. Can you remember trying to do this when you were a kid? Yes. One hour later, I finally got it on. There we go. So, adding some silver scratch marks and some other things. As you can see, I put some silver on the bones, added a red ruby thingamabobber, um, just trying to give it more depth. Now, the paint job for this one, as opposed to Man at Arms, is, is quite a bit simpler, but there was something that's always bugged me about Skeletor. Did you ever see the first episode? He was like a blue regular guy, but he wanted more power and somehow his, his face melted off. So, but in the original one, before his face melted off from superpower, he had a cape. So then I always wondered, how come Skeletor has a bag on his head, but no cape? It never made sense. So for my Skeletor, I decided to add a cape. I went down and raided my wife's ever-growing pile of extra fabric from her sewing business 
and picked up some purple felt. Now you can't just use purple felt the way it is, so you have to scuff it with a knife, cut it, add black, basically weathering the cloth. So this way, he has a hooded cloak as opposed to a bag that holds the skeleton face parts in. Yeah, I, I don't understand either. The other thing I never understood is why his face was yellow and green. But, hey, it was cool. When you're a kid, you just thought it was awesome to watch these guys beat each other up and run past the same cutscene over and over again. So here I'm making some folds in it with some hot glue, and now I'm just going to attach it to the back of the armor. Now here I've got it on and I'm just trying to adjust it. What would look the best? Does it go over shoulder? Does it go over those shoulder pad things? What does it do? But I noticed afterwards that it looked good and it fit good. It was a good place to put it on the armor, but it still didn't make sense. It didn't really connect to his overall hood. So I think I'm going to go back and, and add a hood to it that will go over the plastic hood. But I'm pretty happy with it. It looks better. It looks... I don't know. Looks like something Kevin Smith would put in his shell. Let's hope so. All right. Next time will be He-Man and Battle Cat. Later.